Hey you! Welcome to the What Reading Book Podcast, the no boring zone where we get you all excited about books that are worth reading. On the What Reading Podcast, you get some unbiased take on books, juicy scoops of what runs through the minds of your favorite author. You can call us your virtual book connoisseurs that help you filter through the many books out there and let you know the ones worth reading. On this podcast, we talk about different book genre. We do not discriminate from fiction to non-fiction, poetry, biographies, memoirs, you name it. So long as it is written by an author of African descent and project our very own authentic African stories, you can count us in. So welcome on board and thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the show. The show. The show. Hello everyone, welcome to yet another episode of What Reading Podcast. Good to have you back, it's episode 7, I was super excited about the boards and the feedback we've been getting from you guys, thank you for always, always tuning in and we're excited about this new episode because we got a guest, a very important guest, if you get know what I mean. I'm really excited about this one because it's an author that I really admire so much. And we're going to be focusing on his book and talking about his previous works. And without further ado, the book we're talking about today, by the time I mention the title, you can almost guess who our guest is, is A Broken People's Playlist by Chimeka Garrix. Hi, Mr. Chimeka Garrix. Hi. Hi, Toby. Hi, Shay. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you guys for having me. Happy to be here. Um, so, uh, this, this is the point I'm supposed to do the intro about myself, right? <laughs> Definitely. <Okay. laughs> so my name is Chimeka. I call myself a protocol boy. Evidently. Wherever I am, you know, <laughs> wherever, anywhere in the world I am, I'm still a protocol boy. Um, I was raised in protocol, um, a writer and an editor. Um, I have two books. First is a, a novel titled um, Tomorrow Died Yesterday, which was published in 2010. And I also have a collection of short stories titled The Broken People's Playlist, which was published in 2020 after a 10 year gap. I'm also an editor. I've edited a few manuscripts, um, some of which have made it into, um, some of which have been published. I love developmental editing in particular. One of the uh, manuscripts that got published was um, nearly all the men in Lagos are mad, which I had fun. Fun. Um, <laughs> we had fun. We on, had fun like, reading and even reviewing as well. Yeah, for, for fun reading and yeah. you know just the whole I like, just cooking it, you know, just cooking nearly all the men in Lagos are mad, mm-hmm. um, and um, that was fun. Then there's a book called Days of Silence by. Angel mm-hmm. Patrick's and Big Bay was also published by um, Masobi Books. Um, I also had fun editing oh, okay. that one too. So yeah, so that's the okay. And anything I do, it's that very I enjoy. modest intro, right? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I say your very modest introduction. My very modest intro. Let me let me blow my let me blow my horn. Um, yes, yeah, so please, this I is do. your time. It's your chance. Yeah, and I think I I started doing which you know. Um, which I enjoy. I, I teach. Um, I've been lucky to mm. be invited to teach a few master classes about. Oh, okay. Regard. Yeah. So, you know, and it's looking like maybe teaching is in my future because it's fun doing this. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun teaching. Yeah. It's, yeah. Talking about teaching, I like to teach, though. Um, I'm hoping that I can. Maybe retire as a teacher someday. You know that kind of teacher that you yeah. made all the money in the world and you're just Please. going to teach them. <laughs> <laughs> so a cruise teacher. But I did enjoy teaching during my NYC. I, I had fun teaching economics then. So Yeah, teaching, yeah, teaching but, is fantastic. Because it, it helps you learn. You know Exactly. It helps you, it helps you learn. Helps you learn. And I think and it's very interesting to meet you people. and you know, one one thing I one thing that I would always say is sometimes being a fan of a writer is a mix of many things. One moment you are adoring the writer for how they've you know created the perfect character that you love, and another moment you are literally just jeering at the writer, like how do you do this? Like why would you 
to this character in such a manner. <laughs> why, would the story like... end? <laughs> why would this story end, end, end like this? And But I, I think that what I've come to learn is the writer's world is almost like an, a mind that just rolls into infinity. You can think of anything and just start to put pen to paper. You know, sometimes many years ago, I wrote a poem about I wrote a poem about the romance between ink and paper, and how just that action or those those actions, pen, ink, and paper, has done humanity so much good, as well as so much mm-hmm. evil. But that's that's for a later conversation. But I think it's the ultimate focus is being a writer. To be very honest, and how does it feel like for you? You know, being a writer, written. Um, two books that have gone into critical acclaim. Um, you've written a couple. You've helped with production of some other books that have become bestsellers. Like nearly all the men yeah. in Lagos are mad is it's a, a bestseller, yeah. bestseller a without a doubt. Even those that even those that do not really like to read, you know, just <laughs> grabbing that book is always a conversation starter. <laughs> yeah. So how does it so, feel like being that writer that just has this flex? Or is it even more honestly, flex than you are even willing to let us know about? Honestly, honestly, it doesn't feel anyhow. I don't feel any. I don't feel like some type of way. Like it's like um, I don't feel different. You know, I enjoy the process of creating, creating stuff, right? Creating stories and all that, and telling stories. But after that, it's done. It's, mm, on to it's, the next one. Not, not like on to the next one. I've only. It's just I just move on with life. You know, I just feel. Oh, okay. I feel. Um, being a writer is important, but the other important things in life, I don't know. Like, so for my, my family is very important to me. So, okay. you know, so I'm able to put, we keep, remove my writer hat and keep it. And like, okay, just be <laughs> a guy at home, you know, or a guy at work, you know, when I was, when I was doing my nine to five, you know, and all that, you know, then once in a while I put back my writer hat on, um, yeah, so it doesn't feel any how from by by hammer like um like J.K. Rowling or Chimamanda or something like that. Maybe it just feels different. It feels different. Right. Maybe it's, maybe it's me saying it now because you know I never hammer, but um, it's just you know for me it's just uh, you know it's just one part of me. You know, it's not probably the most interesting part actually. Really interesting. It's a big deal, yeah, as far as I know. I don't understand why you're trying to play it more, play it so cool. I'm like, gosh, you guys work so much pile on people's mind, on people's imagination. And I remember when I was reading uh, what's the name this book, a, a book on people's playlist. I just called up in my bed. There are one thousand and one other things I could be doing, but I knew I was just absorbed in literally i couldn't put it down and i'm like that's a lot of parts you well done someone that you do not know from other and so i always imagine every writer to you know be some form of superhero and without holding a gun you take my time yeah like (laughs) you know just i get that you know but i also think like you know it, you, it's important to have a balance, you know, mm. um, okay. mm. as a writer. I think, you know, you that can be your entire personality, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, so I've met writers who who are, let's say, not nice people, right? But they've written mm-hmm. fantastic, yeah. you know, work or, you know, and all that. And, yeah, I just take their work, you know, I just, you know, and I, you know, keep the fact that, oh, you were you're a shitty person or whatever it is i just keep that so you know yeah. i just take your walk and you know you know or i get the, it honestly i do yeah. and it's yeah. quite admirable <laughs> because again I, I honestly feel that writers are very powerful and knowing mm-hmm. how much power you have to you know weld on people's mind with words and all of that and you still strike a balance you try to come but mentalize everything and understand that, you know, beyond just being a writer, I'm also a father, I'm a son, and so many things to other people is quite interesting. It shows that you're human, you're flesh and blood, and it's exciting to know that uh, for me. And so uh, one of the next questions that I'm going to ask is sort of going to be like me harassing you, like, so when are we getting the second book? 
Yes, I needed to have <laughs> on behalf of the main, the, the the main of, second book, right? Yes, <laughs> yeah. the, the one that fans <laughs> of the, the one that you, ke- that you kept aside. <laughs> and decided to <laughs> now wet our appetite and make matters yeah. worse. Yeah. You know. See, let me tell you guys the truth. And I, well, so Otuke, my publisher, right? Yeah. He's like on my neck for a novel, right? For that second novel, he's on my neck. He's like, you know. When is this going to happen? The answer is by God's grace, by the grace of God, by the special grace, God willing. Like, let, me say, like, let me say, 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 by God's grace, fingers crossed. Next year, okay. when it gets okay. published, no pressure, I don't know. no pressure, no There's pressure. pressure. But the pressure the is getting is... worse on this particular <laughs> no, 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 episode. I, I to, you guys just heard it to, on what reading I podcast to, that Chimikar has given us his words. <laughs> you, can't, you can't. No, the thing is that you cannot categorically tell us what you know. now. <laughs> if Otuke, have you, has Otuke pressured you before? I know, I know, Otuke, I know what he's capable of. <laughs> Otuke is a pain. Otuke, you know, for Africa. he can follow up. You know, Otuke has come and offered me, I won't say the amount of money. He now says, Call me one day and said, You know what, bros, as this book did like this now, what if I give you XYZ amount? Say, you go pop, pop. Sharp guy. To just go and finish it. I said, Otuke, just I'm go not, to one island because, and. Let me, say, let me say, I was like, Not because I don't need money, but if I collect Otuke's money, next morning, Otuke will send me a message. Sure? Bros, I see my head. Good morning. <laughs> 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 oh, my so, no, no. Yeah. no. But, I but imagine it's probably thing is also that, that pressure where you feel you want to make it. No, I feel to be under pressure too. Like, too. I feel to be under I, I'm very good at like pushing that pressure away. To yeah, say, I think that's I, very I important. It's yeah, very I important not to write on that. It alters yeah, many things. It alters how you write and even the eventual yeah. that you put out that you, that you get out so no pressure well on my end i don't know what toby's talking about pressure but on my end, no pressure we'll wait to we'll wait to see the and, the, and very, the thing very, is may i choose my is, you know, okay. angle too. <laughs> no you, you can't you can't even if you're holding my shirt like this even if you're here holding my shirt <laughs> like you can't make me you can't make me write you know i'll write when i write it yeah you yeah know. yeah yeah but one other thing is, um, I still think I'm on, on, a, on a journey in my in my writing career. Like, mm-hmm. I'm still learning stuff. Um, yeah. So I started with a novel. Then I wrote a collection of short stories. And as I time I wrote a collection of short stories, I felt like, you know what? I'd rather be a short story writer than mm-hmm. a writer of novels. Okay. Now, the Why? thing is... I just enjoyed, you know, I just enjoyed it. And like I said, it's a journey. I'm still discovering myself. Yeah. Now, the thing is, in the in the business, for some reason, they prefer you to have a novel. Like short the stories, novel. for some reason, they don't, people don't really like short but well, publishers, for some reason, yeah, they don't. you know, mm-hmm. they don't really want to put their, put their money behind short stories. Um, so, you know, and now I'm thinking, okay, I enjoy writing short stories. Maybe I should write a screenplay. I was actually going to ask you about that one. Like every single you know, so short thinking, story yeah, maybe I should. would you know? have been made a very great BBC series, for example, or some script that uh, Nebuni Life yeah, and exactly. Take Off and, you know. You know. So, uh, and I, almost, know, I, I actually look forward to a moment when our writers would begin to churn out works that can actually be adopted into you know series and because we've got very great stories out there that can be adapted into so many movies into series and yeah i think a couple yeah, of yeah, them are, a couple of, a couple of them there. are out there yeah there are mm-hmm. a couple of books that have that recently even made it to you know to the screens I know sometime last year, Sefia Taswalo was on Netflix. Yeah. Um, recently, oh, yeah, Wally Shankar's uh, Elisha yeah, was on yeah, Netflix yeah. as well. So, yeah, I Both believe that the industry is beginning to mature a lot more. Sorry? Mm-hmm. I said, so I'm looking forward to more contemporary works. I know um, for Lola Shuneng is um, The Secret Life of Baba Segi. Yeah, Secret Life of Baba Segi is what. 
I can't wait to see what that will look like. I hope you do just yeah, me too. Yeah, um, so it would be fantastic to have this, the Broken People's Playlist. I, I was, yeah. while I was reading some of the stories, I was just imagining who the perfect character would be for, you know, some of <laughs> the stories. And I'm like, hmm, I imagine a being body boy in one of the ladies. And I'm like, okay, let's see how that goes. But yeah, it's no, a beautiful uh, let me one. Tell you, let me tell you where, where she will be. I put Which a spell one? on you. <laughs> oh, <my goodness>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she has the right dose of drama for that yeah, particular that. one. You know, uh, oh yeah. god, it would be epic. <laughs> like, I'm so that's sure she's going to do it. She justice. Has. She'll be moji. And see, yeah. <laughs> she, she looks like a moji anyways, by default. So, yeah. as she'll back up on, she has that sass and everything. So, this is us, <laughs> like... Giving all these movie producers a hint, like go check out this book. It's a worthwhile one, and yeah. it's a great story. Yeah. Which brings me to really, you know, diving into more details about this book because that's what we're talking about, basically. I, I have a couple of stories here that are like my favorite. Um, I want to start by asking Chimeka, which you thoroughly enjoy writing the most. I know, of course, um, asking a writer. Ooh, which book one you enjoy writing the most or which stories is favorite is like asking you to choose your favorite child but please indulge us let us <laughs> attempt to at least tell us the one that you have sort of like a soft spot for or one that you have sort of like a bias for basically um so i mean you've, you've already taken out the you've already answered the question you know <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I can oh, tell you, king. I can tell you. <laughs> um, okay, so I'll put it like this: There's some stories I hoped I'm um, happy I wrote for various yeah. reasons. So one of the things when I was writing a broken people's playlist was to one of the things I was trying to do. Like I said before, I was I, I'm trying to. I think I'm still growing as a writer. I'm still developing certain things. Mm-hmm. So one of the things I wanted to do was to be able to tell. St- to write female characters mm-hmm. plausibly, right? You know, there's this trope, this or something about they say men don't write, you know, women very well. And looking back at some other ideas today, you know how it is. At the time I wrote it, it was the best I could do, right? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Looking back at it now, I was like, ah. I wish I'd written this better or written this. You know how it is. You know. Yeah. You know, you, you grow as a person. So one of the things I wanted to do was write women better. And I wanted to be able to write a story. And if someone reads it blind, mm-hmm. the person won't be able to know. If it's a story about it from a woman's a perspective. Woman. And if someone reads it blind, um, the person won't be able to tell. Now, I don't know if I've that achieved really- that. Yes, the person would be telling if it was a man or a woman who wrote it, you know. So I don't know whether I achieved that, but I compared to where I was in 2010 as a writer, I've grown, and I think I've written women better now. Um, so all the stories involving women f- from female perspectives, I'm happy I told those. Um, yeah. Okay. Then also there are certain stories I wanted to tell from. Um, a man's perspective from men's perspective, mm-hmm. right? Um, stories <laughs> about like how I can't stop laughing <laughs> because of um, I put a spell on you, like it's just the perfect dose of humor, everything was just on point. And talking about whether or not you did justice to you know depicting the female character perfectly, I think you did. Maybe over time you've taken time to you know observe more women. You you get it like how the woman's mind work, and there were parts where I could relate to some of the palace, the analogies, and the conversation between uh, Moji and I can't remember the name of the other characters though. So tell us who were the so women me. in your lives that help you observe, um, get better <laughs> you run the manuscript through them so, so, obvious, were you obvious, probing obvious, them obvious. like what else do you now get? what did they do in my head yes. when this thing is happening and like how would you react if this happens and they began to you know try to pen that particular 
scenario now. I'm just curious, really. <laughs> yeah, so obviously, <laughs> obviously my wife, um, mm-hmm. you know, so so I typically, my, my writing process involves me writing something and giving her to read. And yeah. if she says it's good, it's good. If she says it's not good, sometimes I'll argue with her. Oh, yeah. but I will let her find out that she's her. right. You should follow Chibeka's she, wife, by the way. Shout out to her. She's always right, as much as it uh, pains me to say, she's always right. You know, so um, so far, um, so yeah, you know. Then I have female friends, uh, you know, and I'll send to them say, you know, read this, you know, mm-hmm. read this. What, what do you think? You know, how would this person react like this? You know, the person is like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and I've, I've gotten that feedback. And of course, I'm also like, one of the things I enjoy doing is, is watching people. So I've met, obviously, met people in, in life, you know, met men and women, you know, I've lived an interesting life, met many men and women, and, you know, you just watch people and, you know, like do this armchair psychoanalysis, uh, you know, <laughs> of, of what makes them yeah. sick, why they react like this, you know, and you know why they react in certain ways, and um, so it's fun to do, you know. So by the time you've seen, you've seen several people or several, let's say, men or several women behaving in a certain way, or you know, you, you know, you can put it in a story, and um, you know, it's, you know. It's, there's any stereotypes, but but you find out that in reality, like those things. So let me give you an example. Um, people who, like in my experience, girls who were looked at as wayward, mm-hmm. right, um, or who are very sexualized and all that. Um, mm-hmm. If you get to know them, um, it's either sometimes it's of course there will be exceptions and all that, but. But yeah. mm-hmm. um, it, many of them have maybe daddy issues. Many of them were um, many of them were sexually assaulted, mm-hmm. and even this even happens to guys to guys who are very you know very sexual, right? They have, many of them were like um, some some of them suffered a good number of them suffered some form of sexual abuse as children or something like that, and you know. And it plays out, obviously, in, you know, their relationships and all that, you know. So you see someone, um, like, one, one of the stories, um, you know. Um, um, song for Someone. Desper- yeah, Song for Someone and Desperado. Um, you know, those stories, you know, it's, yeah. it, I've met people, I've met several people like that, you know, mm-hmm. that are, you know. And when you just kill just the top layer and you just find out how, find out about these people, this is, you know, where they're coming from, you know. Yeah, so talking about, um, you know, uh, one, one question I was, I was always going to ask is, how many of these lives have you lived? Is a question I always like to ask writers. Because I know a writer's mind can be anybody at any time. A writer's mind can be anywhere at any time. But sometimes the seed for some stories are actually born from the lives that a writer has lived or had or hoped to live, right? So I'm just curious, you know, when I read the story about, one thing I must talk about is, you know, kudos to the dynamic stories that you told, you know, there are stories about police brutality, there are stories about yeah. infidelity, there mm-hmm. are stories about, um, you know, difficulty in even childbearing, for instance, mm-hmm. and that whole process, uh, how um, either the man begins to doubt himself of, and think that, you know, some, like Nolly would, would depict to us, was it that one yeah. lady cost him from way back <laughs> because he, he made her, he so made her have an abortion. So perspective on those issues, yeah. Yeah, there are stories about cultism. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but, but funny thing is the story that I still love the most is the very first story. And, you know, I feel that uh, that's that's a grand entrance into the book. Once you read that, you're like, nah, nah, this, if this is the first story, then I'm in for a treat, 
right? <laughs> and you know, just looking at looking at. So again, back to my question, so I don't forget what I asked. Like, how many of these lives have you lived, and what were the influences aside from oh, knowing people that have you know gone through certain situations? I bet you that some of those stories may not have been other people. Some of those stories may have also been fictional, clearly, but there will be there would have been likely one or two that are more of lived experiences, sort of. Yeah. So the stories are all fiction, obviously, right? Let me say this from, okay. from the gate. The stories are all <laughs> but, <laughs> but the fiction is influenced by lived experiences, right? So you, you know, people you have met, you know, things you have done in life and all that, you know. And in life, right, even if you live up to 90 or 100, you know, God gives you long life, right? Yeah. There's a limit to how many mistakes you can make or there's a limit to what you Oh, can of course. Do. Otherwise, you'd have been likely dead or something. Mistakes, right? And, you know, when I think I also try to do is to write um, relatable stories. So the first story is, like, lost love, right? It's a story of, you know, and almost everybody, even if it's not you, it's your 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 guy or your girl or you know your friends or your cousins, you know, or you'd have heard that all oh, these people, they these people, they they were supposed to be together, but somehow it didn't happen. I mean, I mean, yeah, it's something that's actually, actually. People, you understand. Um, the same thing with um, the same thing with what's it called facility issues and all that. You know, it's something that mm-hmm. it's common you know lots of people you know except you know, i think okay let's say at my age right you know i've met people who have you know who, you know maybe if i was 20 out it wouldn't come it wouldn't this kind of things this kind of discussions will be had in my circle but you know by the time you get to 30 you you know you get married by the time you get to 40 you know you know you will hear of somebody who a couple or something who who has mm-hmm. Um, for struggling, you know, and all that, you know, and it's just little things, you know, just yeah, 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 wanted to yeah. tell all, all, all that, you know, then lived experience is coming because, okay, you've met a few people like that, you know, you can tell. So, for example, the Confra story, right? You can tell that if you've met Confra guys, you, you know, you know, that's some of them are bad and some of them are very normal. Yeah, actually. Just, you know, your your next door neighbor, you understand? The guy you grew up with, you played football with, you know, you went to school with and all that. And, you know, he's just there. He's as ordinary as that. He has, you know, of course, there are guys who sh- who come and shoot you for, for nothing. But there are guys that are your next door neighbors who would, you know, so that's it. Well, uh, that's that's quite interesting to hear, and I, I quite agree with you, right? There are many of these things uh, uh, around us. Many of these things happen to people around us. Uh, just on 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 a lighter note, I liked um, how you ended. I put a spell on you. So what I like about it is, you know, seeing the seeing the proposal, I assume that oh yeah, this guy has come to his senses. You know, how can you? be over 40 and just stringing a woman along and all of that until like until you you wrote the phone call and i'm like oh no (laughs) (laughs) and then that that thing you gave me is walking i'm like oh my god (laughs) that was a very good uh, plot twist i didn't plan to i written the story to the point where the story was about um so i put a spell on you let me give you the background my wife used okay. to work in a company and with lots of men, okay. right? You know, and, you know, so there was this gist about some guy who suffered this thing, you know, like his wife <laughs> did this thing to him, like some, yeah. you know, and his guys were laughing at Correct. him. And I all like that, all this kind of gist. You know. <laughs> so it was, it was, you know, and she, so she comes and she gists me and like, you know, oh, you know, this, this ogre, they said he did this, this, this is what happened to him, right? And we laughed. And I thought about it and I was like, okay, maybe I should write a story about this, you know. And, you know, if you've lived, you know, you know men and women, relationships, dynamics, you know, guys come across like, oh, we are the, we're the ones who are chasing, doing the chasing and all that. And we're the ones who are smart. Meanwhile, you know, women are, 
you know, if you're a guy, at least you should know this. Thank you. you know, for men giving are us a lot smarter. <laughs> <laughs> men are a lot smarter and a lot, you understand? And you know, so it was funny. You know, I just I, I did this. I did the story like that. You know, just thought of characters. You know, and it was supposed to be like, oh, this guy. The story was supposed to end where he, you know, supposed to have an inconclusive end. Like, he, yeah. he still can't get it up. You know. He ends his story. He tells them about his his time in Abuja, and he come, when he comes back, and he still can't get it up, and blah blah blah. And that's that's the mm-hmm. end of the story, you know. So I've, I'm planning to end the story there, and something just says, okay, why don't you just, you know, make mochi like more badass, just give her, <laughs> you know, <laughs> make her do want to help his wife pose and all that, you know. And that was it. You know. That was a good one. I was so excited about yes, the perfect comeback and don't try with it, honestly. I, no, I honestly feel with. that for me that actually I found fond of that like sometimes they meet their nemesis in form of women who have to devise more ways than one to you know, cut their exercises. So for me that's a good one. I, I just wanted to dive a bit deeper to understand what like the writing process is like so i imagine that for every single story they were built around specific themes and subject matter which are quite critical so i know you touched on issues around infidelity there was a bit of um um domestic violence as well somewhere um like she rightly mentioned something around police brutality and all of that so I'm like, okay, you knew you wanted to write a collection of 12 stories that were built around you know, music and soundtracks. So was it like you had a list of some subject matters that you wanted to touch on and build your story around? Or it just happened? Or you, So what's like your writing process like? That's just if you could let us into that mind so of it, yours would be phenomenal. It just happened, um, you know, but when it happened and I put it all together, you know, I saw like certain patterns, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I wrote, wrote about it at the, the author's notes, like I was supposed to write a novel, I didn't. Yeah. I started writing yeah. one story and I wrote another one and I wrote another one and I wrote another one. Um, then you know, as of the time I, um, I have the fourth to f- fourth or fifth story or something like that, mm-hmm. you know, and I'll, I'm now like, okay, you know what? Maybe I should do a collection, right? Fourth or between fourth and sixth, I'm not sure exactly sure now. Um, and maybe I should do a collection. Um, but there wasn't, you know, so there wasn't like a real, there wasn't a pattern. It, it was just more like, you know what? Um, what else should you write about now? And should I write about now and you know something will come up and I'll just start writing you know and um, by the time I finished you know I just realized that most of the people I'd written about they had issues mm-hmm. and many of them were seeking some form of um, redemption mm-hmm. right you know so I, I could see that common thread around that yeah. and you know like I said many of you were, were broken and I and I maybe I enjoy it so much. I like writing flawed characters, Where you know, felt, deeply yeah. flawed, deeply messed up people, you know, because yeah. I think they are more interesting than, you know, perfect than, humans. And I, 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 I mean, we're all flawed anyway, so it's just yeah, good, exactly. Oh yeah, good reflection of all flawed. Humanity. <clears throat> um, Amazing. Chronologically, um, you know. So some things, so some things were around. I just remembered now. Um, the story about the story Desperado, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Chronologically, it was the I think it was the second to the last story or something. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second um, to last in the book. Chrono- chronologically, no, no. In terms of chrono- when I wrote it, because the way I wrote it is not how it's arranged. It's arranged That's in a yeah, different. Yeah. The first mm-hmm. story I wrote okay. was actually music, right? But it's music is number yeah. two on the on the this thing. But yeah. Desperado was, I think, chronologically was, or I think it was almost the last story. But I was good to go with, I think, ten stories, ten or nine or something, right? And I, there's this Desperado, um, what prompted it? 
there was this guy who went to secondary school with me. Okay. And um, went to secondary school together from, like, I joined the, the secondary school in Jess, too, right? And he was he was already there. So we, we did secondary school together, did university together, went to the same university. Now, he, when was it? Well, I said it was secondary school was mixed. He, there was a time when, let's say, we were 12, 13, 14, going through puberty and all that. And, you know, we had girls in our secondary school and... And him and one other guy, they used to live in the same neighborhood and they used to, you know, but both of them were very, both of them were very, for want of a better word, they were very randy boys then, you know, <laughs> they to, you know, they were like really, back then, I mean, we were all like little rock rats running around and, you know, like getting to know women or getting to know, you know. And, you know, we did some silly things, but they took it like seven notches. Like, even for us, then we're like, what's wrong with this? You guys were the Jew, you guys were the Jew yes, men. What's wrong, you know, we're like, what's wrong with this guy? So even back then. Um, so, you know, this guy is several years, married, because went to invest and he was always in girls' rooms. And I used to see him, like, back then the joke was like, you know, me and him, the joke was like, oh, dude, only for baby mother they see you. Blah, 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 right? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you know. I don't mean like that. <laughs> fast forward several years, we form a secondary school WhatsApp group. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. We get together. We're all in Lagos. You know, get together for something. We go for drinks, mm-hmm. right? And he starts telling us that a few of us, like five, four or five of us, and he says. Oh, that you know him and that other guy, that other that guy that was his closest friend. Yeah, yeah. That they were both abused wow. when they were kids. One of them was their house help. One of them was a cousin or something like that. I forget who, mm-hmm. which is mm-hmm. which. Mm-hmm. And suddenly, it all made sense. So mm-hmm. this is all sitting down as men, men now. About- Drinks, very you know, drink. and it suddenly this guy's life made sense because, like I've said, I've known him since JS2 and how he was. And I, you know, I was like, you know what, I'm going to write this. You know, can we take a minute to talk about how men actually deal with issues of um, abuse and um, issues of our society, issues around you know, abuse, especially when it happens at a very young age, like. Like, how do men deal with it? Oftentimes, the attention is always focused on, like, the female folks. And I think there are more opportunities and there's more awareness around, you know, women breaking the silence and, you know, talking about some of the trauma they've experienced from these shabby situations. So for men, they, I don't even think men come to a place of admittance. Uh- Oh, Shay, you want to say something? I, yeah, I think nobody really deals with it, right? Um, you just tend to nobody leave really it deals and with it. continue to be broken. Yeah, because and... um, because in the real sense of it, when you say deal with it, you are more or less referring to dealing with it while it occurred, right? So whatever abuse occurred at a time when they couldn't deal with it, they couldn't do anything about it. And so whatever they are doing after that is living with it, living with or without it, right? So some people choose to live with it. So here's the thing about living with it. Some people live with it and are still better off. Some live with it and are worse off. Some live without it and are better off. So what I mean by that is some people have just, you know, choose to numb it Erased and they, don't, they yeah. never think about it. Yeah. And they just, you know, trudge through life. For some other people, they just cannot, you know, turn it off, and it, it becomes an enabler for them. Those memories just sort of fuels, and it's vengeance, or it has sort of, Anger. you know, opened up a sweet spot, or it has opened up a sweet spot for them. So I don't believe anyone learns to deal with. It. I feel that we just let live with or without it. Really, at the end of the day. Yeah, Chimika, so, what's um, your take? In addition to what you've said, I think at least in Nigerian context, right? Or rather, especially in southern Nigeria. Um, and apart from my story, I've seen various like um, threads on Twitter, and you know, yeah. sometimes you know, I've seen, yeah, you know, someone says, "Oh, guys, talk about this," and you know, guys have talked about it, and it's been eye-opening. 
Um, mm. So the first thing is, especially if it's if it's an elder, an older lady abusing a guy, a young mm-hmm. boy, it is sort of like you're expected to enjoy it, mm. right? Mm-hmm. And if you mm-hmm. speak to guys who have who have suffered this thing, many of them at some point they enjoyed it to an extent, right? But it's, it's a conflicting thing because this is a terrible thing happening to you. And many of them are conflicted about the fact that they enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Like I said, the guy that I, my, um, this is my friend, you know, my classmate, he said the same thing, you know, and most of the guys who I've seen who have talked about it, they've said the same thing. And, you know, it's like, you know, our culture is like, ah, uh-uh, you're it's getting a standard. I mean, if it happens, yeah, it's, it's, it's a double standard. It's, exactly. It's, it's a double it's standard. Not that, that it's not. Way. You understand? That Your guys will laugh at you. Your guys will yeah. laugh at you to say if you're 16 and let's say if you're 14 or something and mm. and let's say an 18 year old or a 20 year old even in the West mm. you understand we have one of the awesome, excuse me we have school teachers that are hitting on female on teachers yeah. and all yeah, that most of the students. comments you know people will be like why is he you know people will be like I want to be this guy or <laughs> whatever right you know but the truth is you know people it affects it affects them in, in several ways because mm-hmm. many of them struggle in having proper relationships you know yeah, yeah. many of them struggle you know with having struggle with infidelity struggle with like mm-hmm. high libido it's 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 crazy and you know like well, sometimes this year i saw a thread you know some people mm-hmm. some guys talking about it on twitter you know you know but it was it was very sad, you know, because they'll tell you like you know they'll say things like oh they can't um, you know they can't stop you know porn or whatever. It's, it's just it's mm-hmm. just and that kind of innocence has been lost. And you know Nigeria doesn't do every I think every Nigeria needs therapy, but Nigeria doesn't. Do <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, Nigeria. You're in your own, you know, you're your own in this world, you know. So you deal yeah. with it like like. Um, she said, "You have to do, you know, find a way to deal with it. But it's what it is." Yeah, I think um, you know, just coming out of you know that immersive conversation, uh, one thing I, I really liked about the book is how deliberate you were about telling a story of Port Harcourt, one way or the other. Yeah. Um, so not just about the cities in Port Harcourt, even some of the tribes in river state now some of the streets some of the places the and the names of people right and you know i was telling toby i said that i'm tired of li- reading of oshodi or streets in lagos <laughs> and i really <laughs> enjoyed that part of Nigeria. the book where yeah. you know every story was woven around somewhere in potakot so and I, I actually enjoyed reading the chase you know you know the chase where where you talked about police brutality how you know the officer chased through different points of of the streets and and all of that how you you know talked about the slums and and all in as much as that was a very sad story and it's a very sad but very real story right i have a close friend that's thankfully he didn't lose his life but he was i wrote about it on my blog sometime back he was traveling and he was traveling to somewhere i think it was, he was going for an event in one of the uh, parish universities in the southwest and if he went by public vehicle and they stopped this, this bus and just by glancing into the vehicle they just literally and picked a few young men out of the bus and you know he slept in the cell overnight and he told me he said that the only thing that saved him was that one of the people that was also picked was an indigenous you know of that community station was so news had gotten out he had been picked up he's in the cell and when you know they had come to bail that guy he just literally begged the guy that please just help me because his phone has been taken he couldn't reach out to anybody and he was in a strange community he didn't live there and that was the only way he could get out of police custody and i can imagine how many other young men across nigeria uh, face this kind of situation so uh, i would say thank you for also putting in the book uh, i think that if i were to you know read this book i would say that uh, the range actually the range of topics you touched on with it, it's okay to read short stories and you know reach feel good short stories 
But I think sometimes we really want to read about what what happens, what really happens around us. And these stories are not far-fetched. They are literally our day-to-day life, the day-to-day lives of our neighbors, of our friends, of mm-hmm. our compatriots in other parts of the country, our church members, our neighbors, name it. Yeah. This is the real life of an average Nigerian. And, you know, it's sad to say, would I then say that the average Nigerian is synonymous with being a broken person? Well, that's a question to ask myself. (laughs) Whether you like it or not, we are all broken. We are all flawed in different ways. Yeah, we're all broken. But Nigeria, 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 it's... um, I mean, we all have this love hate relationship with Nigeria. Yeah, actually, actually, I think uh, Nigeria has broken us to a point where we've come to terms with being broken, and we are literally just moving around in that brokenness. Ah, my guy, ah, you're so broken. Ah, ah so we now so we did for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very quickly, Chimeka. Um, do you want to tell us about your love and ties with Port Harcourt as a city? I don't know what is it about that CP, right? Like, an average <laughs> person that I meet is always quite mysterious, like, they yeah, are vocal, like, they, they go tell you as to be, we get what I mean. And they are uh, always. Well, at least we see, what, we see what Wiki is doing <laughs> around the country. The so. Please. Yeah, we see what Wiki is also about doing about and, about and, about the li- and the live bands and all. So. <laughs> That's a good. That's a good Portakot oh, ambassador. Is that what we mean, life band? Uh, yeah. So the thing is, like, let me let me be honest, right? We all grew up in certain in different places, right? And yeah. I think if you have happy memories from from where you grew up in, you know, that place yeah. would chances that that place would be like a thing for you, like you know. So you know, I grew up in Portakot. I loved Portakot. It's a different Portakot to the Portakot. Portakot I grew up in. The Portakot I grew up in, honestly. It's a different protocol from what it is now, right? It's you know, but it was uh, it was a far gentler protocol. It was like it, back then it was a civil service town, you know. It, it was just it, it was just chilled and um, it just had its own vibe, you know. It, it, there was lots of there, was, there were lots of parties. It just had this chilled, grooving, you know. Let's let's have fun um, thing. That Potter Court is never coming back. You know, it's that the Potter Court I grew up in. It's never coming back. It's just um, it's just there. It's, it's dead. You know, and I miss it. You know, so part of the reasons I write about Potter Court is to it's sort of like a love letter now to like you know how your your first love you know person has moved on and you know moved on to somebody some other person and you're just you know you know the person is never going to come back but you still <laughs> still glances, you're still right? holding you know, on how, you know just yeah so, yeah you just you know so that what that is, is never coming back but it was a really nice place to grow up in was during my time that's great to hear toby where's potacot for you or oh, where's that place that you remember and you're like oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know the funny thing, you know, it's the same thing you can say it about any other city, right? Because exactly. But I got to look at Lagos and be like, these people are crazy. Like, <laughs> like it's only to know this place. All I've known yeah, all my exactly. life. And Lagos will look at any any other city outside Lagos and be like, we can't How can live you? here. Like, exactly, like, exactly. <laughs> It's, it doesn't have the vibe. It doesn't have the energy. Like no, I think that's know. after a while. Though. When you leave Lagos for some time, you uh, initially exactly. there's that there's that struggle. You want to go back to Lagos. Lagos has the vim. It has the vibe. It has the energy. Mm. Uh, but when you like, it happened to me though. And you know, I, I moved out of Lagos. I moved to Abuja. And for the first eight months, I really wanted to get back to Lagos. I missed everything about Lagos. I missed the traffic, actually. You know, I missed the traffic as well, right? But I was in Lagos <laughs> recently, and I always can't wait Couldn't to wait get to out of Lagos. Right? What's wrong with all these people? You'd be like, what's wrong with all these Lagos people? What's it like? I love it. I love it. I miss it. It's a love-hate oh, yeah, relationship I, I, for me. Exactly. Exactly. It's a love-hate relationship. 
is Lagos is that city for me that I always want to be in, but I just can't wait to get out of. So yeah. I think that's the story of Lagos and me now currently. But anyways, um, I think it's it's been a very very good conversation with you, Chipika. And you know, yeah, yeah, um, we really fun. can go on and on and dive into the different um, stories I've spoken about and you know the motivations behind the stories. But one thing that I would say, uh, just in closing, is you. I look forward to the next book, right? I look forward to. There, there are very few people that, that write immersive stories that you know will draw you in, and if you are not careful, you could you could just feel a tear drop somewhere. And um, I, th- hey, I think that, that that's what this book was about. Man, Christ, that's what you're saying. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Oh, of course, that's of course. Something. <clears throat> that's something. Because you know, <laughs> one thing one thing I've reiterated all through this episode is how these stories are real stories, right? Uh, as much yeah. as it's fictional, you really. Ca- I could see the guy, I, and I keep making reference to the police brutality story. I really could see the guy running off. I really could see the guy being hounded into in, into that vehicle. I could see him being shot at, and then what? Until the until the next young man, right? I could see the lady that uh, her father had left her for so long, and mm. she had lived all sorts of lives. And you know, I could see Trying the young boy that was there, defrauded. Yeah. You know was trying to get an agent <laughs> so i think anyone should just grab this book and see these stories for yourself and see thank how you. close to home they really are um and so i'll, I'll, I'll also say thank you for writing it uh, because something i always say i've said it on one episode and i'll say it again that sometimes we don't choose the stories the stories choose us and if we don't write it it moves on to the next person so well thank you for yielding to the stories and writing them and not allowing it move on to the next person maybe toby would have written it you know i would have done justice to it yeah, let me just yeah. admit chimaka no. is a fantastic storyteller and uh, the stories couldn't have been told better there was no better person to tell them than him so thank you Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much. Just, I just want to touch on quickly on the point she made about like if you don't write a story, it's going to, it's going to leave you and go to someone else or something like that. Um, yeah. You know, there's also, also to that like there's certain stories that should be told over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, you know, it's just like the, the the Bible. You know, like the the four Gospels. You know, many of the stories there were told like from yeah, four different exactly, perspectives. Yeah, exactly, from different perspectives. That, you know. Yeah. Um. You know, so I, I I'm hoping that more people will tell you know different stories about like, um. You know, for example, police brutality in Nigeria. Yeah. Uh, um. I read one story by, jeez, her name forgets me. I think it's Francis Ogamba. It's called oh, Sugar. But it was fant- it was fant- it's a story about police brutality and it was um up there and I and I even put it in the class that I taught in the class I taught I put I, I put a link to the story and told them to go read that story. Um for stories about for example conference in school, Ego Semas when um he did Fine Boys first, right? Yeah. And you know, Fine Boys was, you know, and I when I wrote um that story, I also I also mentioned Ego Semas Mas Wayne's Fine Boys in the story because it was mm-hmm. like, you know, was a big influence and all that. And I'm hoping that more people write, you know, stories, you know, maybe just see me and Ego Sas you know, stories and you know, write theirs. Um so yeah. So, yeah, yeah so great hope. points. It's very important to have varying perspectives yeah. about you know this topic, the stories, because we can't tell them enough. And there's always, like yeah. you said, there's always something new, their fresher perspective to always see things through their yeah, new lenses. You can always you know put over new stuff from. So it's really refreshing to get your take. And um, there's just something so powerful about how you told yours. It's super emotive and it's something that would linger on and would even drive for that conversation and help people to you know explore those issues and perhaps make better decisions. And I think that's one of the things that make writers very powerful. Like, without even trying so hard you know, influence minds, much people towards the right direction. So yeah, thank you so much for this. On that note, we will be calling it a day. Thank you so much. Um, but before we do, Shay, very quickly, um, let's read this. What 
on a scale of one to ten, how many stars would you be given to uh, the Broken People's Playlist? Um, it's always a 10 over 10 for me. I will. Uh, it's always a time about Yeah, man, who are you lecturer? Unfortunately, yeah, yeah, yeah. is for God. I, I think this. <laughs> that is for me. I think the stories. Uh, yeah, I think this. I think the stories just get me. So I'm sold. You know, take me away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm actually so glad to hear that from you, as in from your mind, and it, it means a lot for me. It's really like borderline eight point five or anything buying towards that and. I'm totally looking forward to your next book. I, I should mention that on Goodreads, this book has been getting like, I think 4.4 stars and so many amazing yeah. reviews. Like, it's really like yeah. great, top notch. That's so weird, hard to come by. And it says a lot about your gifts, your talent. And I can't wait for more people to read this book. And so I uh, would be urging you to. Grab a copy where books are sold from reputable bookstores. You're not going to mention Ruby Night, guys. So aside from Ruby Night, you can always check out all the stores. <laughs> it's available on Amazon as well. And like I mentioned earlier, um, good news for um, the audience in the diaspora in the UK. HarperCollins just got the right to publish this. And I'm totally looking forward to, you know, the book reaching a more diverse audience. So congratulations on that yet again, Chimaka. Thank you so, thank um, you so thank much. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, would love to read and hear your thoughts if you've read a book of people's playlist. Let us know on Twitter. Send us a message. Send us an email and we'll be excited to you know, respond to them and keep the conversation going. On that note, it is bye from me. Bye everyone. Um, bye. bye everyone. Bye everyone. Thank, everyone. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Very enjoyed bye. the conversation. Um, thank you guys. And uh, thanks to, to Robin Hyde for the support over the years. The pleasure. <laughs>